Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, we are making a deconstructed envelope two ways. Actually, it's more than two ways. In fact, it's numerous ways. And I promise you will be bursting with ideas and inspiration after watching this video. Let's begin. Firstly, in case you're wondering, a deconstructed envelope is an envelope that opens up so it doesn't have a pocket per se. It can be used as a card for a special occasion, a junk journal companion or an insert, or a standalone gift for someone special. Let me show you how to make it. Okay, I suggest we start with this format first, the one that flips open this way or flips down like that. And for this, I'm going to be using this 12 by 12 sheet of paper. You don't have to use 12 by 12. You can, for example, use two A4 sized sheets or standard copy or printer paper. You can use smaller papers, six by six, eight by eight, whatever you have. I'm gonna go with 12 by 12. And the next thing I'm going to do is determine the width of my envelope that I want. So how wide do you want this to be? These ones that I made, they're all five inches wide. If you're using 12 by 12, you can only go up to six inches because you need to have two of the pieces exactly the same size, exactly the same width. I'm just going to stick with five. All right, so I'm just going to mark five inches and cut that down. Okay, and here are my two five inch wide pieces. When you trim your pieces down, you just want to check that they're exactly the same size. And you know, sometimes this happens, there's a discrepancy, I don't know how, I must have had that tilted a little bit when I was cutting. So you can fix this mistake at this point, or you can do it later when your envelope is made and just go ahead and trim. I'm going to do it now, might as well. You might even need some more adjustments later, and that's okay, as long as you know that all of these little things can be fixed. All right, here we go. So next thing I'm going to do is the flap. I'm just going to determine where I want it. You can have a long one like this. You can have a really short one. I just kind of decide as I go because my ones are all different, like this one here. Three inches. This one's less than three inches. So I just personal pre preference, I suppose. I'm just going to eyeball it now again. And let's say I'm going to go with that. And that ended up being just under three inches. So that seems to be the sweet spot. Okay, next, depending on your scrapbook paper that you're using, you might have designs on both sides. So at this point, you decide what you want to be the outside of your envelope, or should I say the visible side, right? For me, it's easy to decide because it's just black on the uh, on one side. So I'm just going to use this as the inside. So my envelope is going to be exactly the same on the outside. And I'm not really sure how much I like that look. So I can always break it up with something underneath here. I can mat this or I can even go ahead and, and uh, cut a se separate piece down and use that instead of this. So mix and match. So I can start off with cutting two pieces of paper in half or at five inches and then mixing them, right? I think I'm going to go and do this and then I'm going to mat this piece, which is exactly what I did here. So again, I used the same piece of paper and it just looked really exactly the same. Like you couldn't see the difference. You couldn't see the flap. And then what I did is matted actually both the pieces. So I have the mat here, which is just a separate piece of scrapbook paper. And then underneath, and I think this is pretty cool because I created a pocket here. So that's really, really cool because it creates an extra element to the deconstructed envelope and it actually creates a pocket. So more space for stuff and more space for journaling and, and fun. So that's what I'm going to do with this one, but we will get to that next. So now all we have to do is join these together. So you can, we're hinging them. You can use a bit of masking tape, you can use washi tape, 
or you can overlap them which is what i'm going to do i think this gives a beautiful finish and it's uh, the quickest and easiest you can see here overlapped it's a beautiful beautiful finish and also uh, a bit of extra support than the bottom of the envelope so that's what i'm going to do i will overlap them and i'm going to use a double-sided tape apply the double-sided tape to the top of this piece perfect and now to make things easier if you by any chance have a scoring board it's good to make a little score just under that double-sided tape just to make that folding process easier you don't need the scoreboard i mean you can do this with your hands but anyway okay excellent and another thing i like to do is apply just a little bit of glue stick over the top of the double-sided tape because that way i can when i pop this on top if i don't do it correctly i can still maneuver it into place all right i'm just going to turn it around this way i just realized i did it wrong if i do it this way then my black side is on the front it's going to look like this and that's not what i wanted to do i wanted this to be the front so very easy to fix just chop that off and let's think this through properly okay if i want that there then that means i need to have double sided tape on this side all right that's on score make the fold fill this off apply glue stick and now we're back on track and now when i close this you can see how it's not sticking down because that glue stick has min sort of minimized the double sided tape's effectiveness so that i have time to maneuver things into place and then make sure before i kind of press down that everything is aligned you know the way that i want it to be that's looking pretty good okay now this piece is way too long so we just need to trim it down it needs to be able to go under the flap so i'm going to turn it this way and just mark myself give myself a little bit of space from where that flap is folded and trim that off all right so that little piece has been trimmed off and now this will close let's check it at this point no matter how much you've tried to align everything these little misalignments these little things happen i'm just gonna you know go in and trim that off now we can play around with what we want to do at the front here to make it more fun so as i've just shown you you can do something like this you can make a little pocket there at the front you can make a little pocket like this here at the front if you have a beautiful design like this you can just leave it you don't have to add anything extra i'm going to add something here so i can break these two apart hmm i'm just thinking i had this on my desk because i was making this envelope for this project and then i decided not to use it so i'm just thinking would it be silly to do something like this to have a little envelope i mean it doesn't have to be one that opens up all the way but that would be pretty cool looking i think just for something different i wonder if i can make it work i'm really stuck on this idea now so i'm going to try and make it work but first i'm going to ink all the edges all right here we go that's what i've done i've inked the edges and i've rounded all of these corners as well and i've managed to get ink all over the inside so now i'm going to add even more ink i think this is going to look really fun because i i have an idea so now next thing i'm working out is the closure for the envelope for that yellow envelope so i'm going to go with this ribbon because it's flat i want it to be flat on the inside and the reason why i'm placing that underneath is because i want to make this into a pocket as well so now i'm gluing only the three sides down i'm just going with with the flow here i'm just making it up as i go and now i want to determine approximately where do i want this envelope and now i'll be able to determine where i want the closure so this is going to be the closure so i want it about there okay perfect now i know flip this around and i'm going to use double-sided tape to hold the ribbon in place all right we'll come back to that all this inking that i've done is leaving marks so what I'll do is maybe do a bit of stenciling. This isn't something that, you know, I'm just trying to hide, hide the mistakes, really. That will do. And now I'm going to mat that. I mean, I don't really have to because it's nice and white and perfect space for a photograph or journaling spot. But again, just going with the flow. That's looking pretty cool on the inside. And now when that closes, 
we can tie a little bow here just like that or you can do a little magnet there and that's going to keep the envelope closed if that if this is the route you're going with i don't know just uh, i really love the interactive elements in general i love when things flip up open out pull out i just want to kind of put something in there just so that we don't forget that there's a pocket over here i did a little tab on the side so when i slide this in it's kind of visible that there's a little something to be pulled out maybe i can even make it even more fun just add it an eyelet and a little charm it really depends on your time and also how special you want to make the thing all right that's looking really cool so far i'm gonna trim that off later but for now i want to finish this off i want to uh, complete the closure so i'm thinking now that i have this envelope here i'm thinking it would be quite nice to do something here as well so perhaps in this exactly same paper i could do something thick like this or thin like this perhaps might, that might do the trick i can you really can you know the, the possibilities are endless you can play around i can do this and then have my closure here i think this is what i'm gonna go with they're mirroring each other i'm not sure it's i'm not loving it but let's see what we can do next uh closure all right let's go with the closure for my closure i just stamped an image on a piece of paper next i'm going to glue it onto a piece of cardstock you can just stamp directly on your cardstock but i didn't so <laughs> this is how i'm doing it and now i'm going to use my round die to cut this into a circle or you can simply draw a circle and cut it out by hand. The most important thing is that whatever you're using for your closure, whatever piece, you want it to be strong and sturdy, not flimsy. Okay, now I'm just going to see how this looks and if I need to add anything extra. I could always, if I really hate that yellow. I mean, this is just to demonstrate that you can pretty much go into oblivion with things to add and things to create. And what do I like better? Do I like this better? I think either one works just fine, but I'll stick with my initial decision and just leave that as it is. Okay, next I need to fix that onto there and I'm going to use a brad, maybe something like this. That's going to look good. A silver one, a bit of bling one might look even better. I'm going to go with that. Find the center here, make a hole and the center here, make a hole. If I was smart or if I knew what I was doing ahead of time, which I didn't prior to gluing this down I should have attached the brad so that the little feet are not visible on the inside but that's fine let's see how this is gonna look that looks really nice and then when this closes the prongs they are visible on the inside I mean if that kind of thing bothers you you can always mat the inside just cover it up with another piece of paper I kind of did this here just to break that black there a bit i mean the the prongs what i'm trying to say is that that does not bother me in the slightest but of course there are ways around it another way you can do it is if you know you're placing down a, a piece of paper like you know you know you're going to glue down do that whole thing onto that piece of paper and then glue it all down so that the prongs are not visible in the inside they're actually in between that piece of paper and that piece of paper in any case this is what we have so far and now the very last thing for the closure at least is deciding of course what to go with i always seem to go with this black and white twine because it seems to work so well in so many projects okay so now this goes underneath and then we tie knot left over right tighten and right over left so we're creating a double knot i might even go up here and tie the knot why not okay that's plenty of knots tied and now trim this off lovely and then tie this around however many times you want i think twice is enough okay and then trim you can have little beads hanging down here I have the bow and the whole thing happening, so I'm not gonna add anything there. And that's why I kind of shorten it as well. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is. And you can go to town with what you do here. You can do all sorts of things. 
or you can simply leave it as it is or what i'm going to do is i would leave it as it is so we can move on to the next thing now but i want to cover this because of the ribbon so i'm just going to mat this again i'm gonna provide some perhaps writing space all right glue that down okay so we've created a writing space there and then what i wanted to do here just for a bit of fun is glue a paper bag i could do it this way all right this is now complete and let me show you what i did so we already know we open this up we open this up fun 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 a nice little pull out surprise over here very cute and then when you open this up lots of writing space here and then over here i created all sorts of stuff like a pocket here a pocket here from that paper bag i just shoved whatever in there and then you know more stuff here look at this i wish you could see the whole thing and a lot of fun and very interactive and that's what i love about it if you decide to put a paper bag here or whatever you know pockets or anything like that that you put down here keep in mind that when you flip it up everything can fall out because i was thinking maybe having something like this for example you know let's say a pocket this way pop stuff in but then when you go to flip it up to close it you know that might create issues so all of the pockets and everything that i do i've done on the top panel here not the bottom one well this went in a direction that i wasn't expecting i just wanted to quickly demonstrate how to do this whole thing and then it ended up being this extra you know i mean you can do all sorts of stuff here i have just two pieces of scrap paper filled with little bits and pieces journaling spot down here again i didn't put any pockets there and then that closes up and like i've shown before i have a large pocket there on the side and you can see this closure is a little bit different so we're just doing this this whole thing twice we're doing it down there as well and then this can wrap around this one here really really simple just one pocket there at the front and then i didn't do anything inside and then what did i do on this one probably nothing I just matted the inside and I made this one a little bit shorter. It's fitting within the screen. So you can play around with the width of your deconstructed envelope. You can play around with the height. This one today that I made is the tallest one. Okay, I think I, I really love this one. This is my favorite out of all of these. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Oh, before we do, I wanted to mention that of course you can do this type of an orientation as well so you're not cutting down two pieces of paper you're just using one very wide piece of paper and it's 12 by 12 high and then you do your folds you cut that into a triangle so it looks like an envelope really really simple it doesn't get any simpler than this and i made this look kind of like a little house well when i open it up it reminds me of a house the shape and so I went with that kind of thing. I did the door. This is actually glued in the middle, so these tags can't go further than that. And this is kind of like a door, right? And it's like a handle, you know. And these are the windows. Just a piece of cardstock or scrapbook paper that I've cut down, made a little slit, and then I glued it down. I glued all of it down, but I left this part here unglued so that I can do this, yeah? You can make it as simple as just folding a piece of cardstock down or scrapbook paper or you can go and make it elaborate by matting all of the pieces and adding a magnetic closure and you know all, doing all sorts you can mat the whole of inside like i did on these and in fact these are this is the second option this is i mean there's numerous options i've just shown you two different options so you can say this is the third option but anyway this is what we're going to do next and again this is something that can be very simple or very elaborate it's totally up to you how much work you want to put into it but i'm going to show you the basics and then we can go you can go from there and build from there okay for this type of an envelope you will need an envelope punch board and the one that i'm using is from we are memory keepers and it's called envelope punch board i have two different sized envelopes and for this tutorial i'm going to make this size and i'm starting off with eight and a half by eight and a half piece of scrapbook paper for this larger size you need 10 by 10 piece of scrapbook paper and just in case if you're wondering how i made this envelope that opens up all the way i also use my envelope punch board 
and I will tell you exactly which one of these measurements I used here for each of them. But let's start off with making the actual envelope. So I trimmed down my scrapbook paper to eight and a half by eight and a half inches. And now I'm going to do my scoring. I'm just going to show you here on my envelope punch board. I'm using these measurements here, paper size eight and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to do my score line at four and one eighth of an inch. So I get my piece of paper. I'm aligning this side here with four and one eighth. You can see that there, just aligning it there. This is a very handy tool to have. Punch that. And now I'm scoring here. And now we're going to turn it anti-clockwise. So this is clockwise and we're turning it anti-clockwise. We're going the other way. So we're turning it this way. And you can see that score line there. I need to align the score line with this little notch thing here. So that's aligned perfectly there. And now do another score line here. Punch that. And then we'll just keep going anti-clockwise line up the score line with the notch punch score again and one last time anti-clockwise align punch and score so when you first get this if you don't know how to use it it seems a little bit confusing but it really isn't you're simply following the guide here that you chose i've chosen eight and a half by eight and a half and the score line is right there four and one eighths and you're only lining up the very first punching part and, and scoring part. So the very first one you're lining up and then all of the other ones, you're just turning anti-clockwise and scoring, turning anti-clockwise and scoring. So you don't have to worry about that apart from only the very first time you're doing it. Okay, I, I hope that makes sense. Okay, now we're going to the back of the punch board here just to round the corners. And here's what we have. And now we're simply going to use our score marks or score lines and make those folds. I'm going to make the folds really crisp by running my bone folder across. All right. And here we have it. You can see that that's exactly the same size as this one here. If you want to make this size, you use a 10 by 10 sheet of paper and on your envelope punch board, this is the specification that I used here. 10 by 10 and you score at four and three quarters of an inch. You might see that you have another one up here, 10 by 10, but when you fold this 10 by 10, it doesn't give you a square envelope. I'm not entirely sure, but for this one here, you can see that's not a square envelope, that's a rectangle envelope. And I think that was this one down here, eight by eight. So one thing that I do do, and if you do have one of these, it's probably a good idea, which I'm about to show you. Your envelope punch board comes with this separate sheet of paper. And what I did, well, I started, I haven't finished, I haven't made all of the options, but let's say, for example, you see here how I wrote number three. That's because over here I have a prototype, so I can see straight away number three on my punch board is going to give me this size envelope. Number two is going to give me this size envelope. Number 13, where is it? it these are all my markings here right there that one gives me this size envelope and so on and then you have all of these little prototypes that you can when you're making your projects and you're thinking oh which size do i want to use this one for example is this one here so you have your own little reference point i guess you can go and you know do that anyway let's keep going now this is where the part of you can make it as elaborate as you want comes in at this stage, you can simply add a magnetic closure here and you're done with your project. And that's going to be your inside and that's your outside and off you go, done. If you want to be elaborate and extra, you can go ahead and mat all of the little bits, which is what I did here. My base paper actually looks like this. On this 10 by 10 envelope, the paper that I started with is this one here and it was just white on the inside and I went ahead and matted everything. So if you want to get this very rich kind of look, what you would need to do is get another two pieces of paper in exactly the same size, in this case, eight and a half by eight and a half. And you would repeat the exactly the same process with your punch board that we did this, uh, that we did here. But to hurry up with this video and make it nice and quick, I'm only gonna do one. And again, repeating this, exactly the same process. I am aligning it here.
Now that I've done that, instead of folding it down, making it into an envelope, I'm going to cut where my fold lines are. Okay, here's what I have. If you wanted to mat all of the panels on the outside and also on the inside, you would need to do the exact same thing with another piece of paper, you know, scoring and cutting, but I'm only gonna mat some so I can make this a little bit quicker and so that I can show you how to do the magnetic closure. Okay, what we have here is some panels that are exactly the same size as the panels on your envelope. You might choose to only mat the side panels, for example, or you might choose to mat all of the panels, totally up to you. What I'm going to do is only mat the top and bottom here. But first, I wanna ink the edges to make them pop. All right, I've inked all of the edges as well as all of the folds. And you can see that makes quite a bit of a difference. Okay, now these pieces are exactly the same size as the flaps on your envelope. But what you want is to create a little bit of an edge all around. So you just simply place it down, move it up out of the way, like move it up to where you want it. And then you trim off the extra bits. So you can see how I left a bit of space all around, well, top and bottom, and now these are sticking out. So now we're simply going to trim that down a little bit. Ink the edges, perfect. And now that's ready to be glued down. If you wanna do a magnetic closure here, you would apply your magnet there and then glue this on top. But I'm gonna be creating an extra piece, so I'll do that next. All right, that can go down. And now repeat the process, but don't glue it down yet just the trimming down for your all of your panels. If you're doing all the panels, just do the exact same thing on all of them. The only thing is don't glue this panel down just yet because we're applying the magnetic closure. And just a little tip, when you're cutting down your pieces and you, you know, especially if you're matting all of them, you have a whole lot of pieces. Uh, what I did is I'll just mark, let's say this is, this is panel number one, this is panel number two, and then I'll write two on the back here. So then I'm not confused because these panels are smaller than these panels, you can see that. So it can get a little bit confusing, I suppose. And that's a good way of keeping track. You just mark them. Two goes on two, very easy and simple. Okay, ink the edges. And now let's do the little magnets. How fun is that? I just love that. You can do a little back Velcro closure as well if you don't have magnets. All right, here are my two little magnets ready to go. And now I need to prepare something here. A little extra piece like I did here. You can see that. A whole lot of bling right there. Or it can be simple, something like this. A little circle and then a cut around. Looks kind of like a, a faux seal, I suppose. I might use this little piece that I have. And that's going to be okay. And I want it to look something like this. So I'm going to apply my magnet on the back of this piece, right there down the bottom somewhere. Use a little bit of double-sided tape, pop my magnet on top, and then another piece of double-sided tape, sandwiching that magnet in there. And now to hide that magnet and make it look nice, I'm going to use uh, another piece of scrapbook paper just to mat that on top. I might use a black piece of paper just because I want to have a border around this to make it stand out even more. We're going to apply glue all over, including on top of the double-sided tape, and then pop it down, make sure it's really glued down. And now I'm simply going to cut around this whole thing, leaving a little border. All right, here we go. I've inked the edges. Let's see how that's going to look. Okay, now I'm going to glue this down. I'll pop something underneath just in case and just apply glue right on top there. My magnet is down here, so I'm gluing the part where there's no magnet. All right, so that's glued on. And now get your second magnet and pop it on there. And now just apply a little bit of glue, maybe some white glue so that you can see it. Close the envelope and it's gonna leave a mark. I don't know if you can see, there's a little mark. And now again in with the double-sided tape right over that glue. This way you don't have to work out where the magnet has, the second magnet has to go. You simply do it this way. And now when you lift this up, the magnet stays there. And again, I'm going to go in with double-sided tape to cover the magnet. 
And now going back in with that pre-prepared piece, I'm gonna cover that in glue and place it right on top, hiding that magnet and perfect. And now when that closes, it stays closed. How cool is that? I love using magnets. I don't use magnets very often. I think I got mine from eBay. I'm sure you can get them Amazon and all sorts of places. But there we have it. Uh, this is, a, you know, I think this looks quite nice. If you want to mat all of your sides with the exact same paper, it might lose, you know, it is a lot more work. And also you get this overall same kind of look. You can always play around, especially if you've cut down two pieces, uh, two different scrapbook papers, you can play around with different kinds of looks. You know, this might be something that's going to look good, but I'm keeping it simple and just leaving it as it is. Now, when this opens up, it's very busy inside. So all I'm going to do here is just mat this section. And again, from your panels that you've cut down, you know, they fit perfectly in there. Perhaps they need a little bit of trimming. This is also very busy. This I don't like very much. So I'm just going to keep it simple and I'm going to use just a plain piece of paper and perhaps I will apply some photo corners. Why not? There we go, keeping it nice and simple and beautiful. Over here, what I did, it's very busy. It didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to. I should have used clear pockets, but I made little pockets. You can see that, just little pockets that I've sewn directly onto that piece of scrapbook paper and then I glued the whole thing down. So there's no sewing through on the other side. And I filled it up with postage stamps. And you know, I think I like, I really like how that looks. Maybe this scrapbook paper is too busy and you know, everything's quite busy, but. And you know what else? If you're going to make this project, you don't need an envelope punch board. You can open up existing envelopes. Some are easier, some are harder to open up. Sometimes when you tea dye an envelope or if you even try to steam it, you know, that's how they used to get postage stamps of letters, you know, these postage stamps, you steam it, then perhaps you can pry open a ready-made envelope and do this exactly same process if you don't have the envelope punch board. So there we go, a deconstructed envelope two ways when in actual fact it's three, four, five, six, numerous amounts of ways. Like look at all of these different sizes of envelopes that you can make. And like I said, if you don't have an envelope punch board, I mean, this can go in millions of ways. You can have tiny, tiny little ones, you know, you can have really large ones, wide ones horizontal, you know, vertical, square, rectangle, on and on and on. So in any case, I hope that you got lots of inspiration. Let me know which one is your favorite one. I love how this one turned out, even though I was a little bit unsure as we went along. This one here, I love the richness of the closure. This type of thing isn't something that I usually do, but it's always nice to get out of your comfort zone and do something different. It doesn't always have to be the same colors and the same kinds of things that you make. Oh, and also just think about all of the different elements that you could be adding. Like here, we have a charm and a closure this way and a closure this way. And we have this thing here and then we have a magnet here and then we have a pocket here. And you know that the possibilities, I always say this because it's true. The possibilities are truly endless. I hope you feel the urge to create. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.